So a question that I get asked literally never, but I'm going to do a video on it anyways, is how I have my Inventor application options set up when I'm using Inventor. When I do a fresh build, how do I tweak the options for my liking? Uh, this is for the absolute beginner of all beginners, first time users, never used it before users. Uh, and the reason I'm doing this is because I know, I know what it's like when you're watching somebody use a program who look like they know what they're doing and you kind of want to get to that level. It just, it feels more comfortable if you've got your options in the program configured the way that person does. Even if it doesn't really make much of a difference to how things work and your level of knowledge, it's just taken a problem away. It's that comfort level. It's like a problem solved. I don't have to worry about that. It mine's the same as his type of a thing. So I'm just basically doing it for that really. These are options, right? That's, they're called options because they're optional. They're not mandatory. So everything I'm about to do is optional. Uh, if you read through the comments, you might see people saying, I do my, I have this set that way, I have that set that way. Or, well, yeah, read what the people have to say, absolutely, but nothing is mandatory. So these are the Inventor application options. You go to the File button here, and then you go to Options. Or if you've got an older version of Inventor, you go to the Big Eye button, and then go to Options. Uh, and the, yeah, these are application options. These are global options that apply to the program as, as a whole. They're not file specific options and once you set them the idea is they're set for good and they apply across the entire program so i've got mine set as factory this is out of the box default stock everything should be the same as you if yours is out of the box uh, and I'll, all i'll do is i'll go through the settings that i tend to change on a fresh build i'll sort of set and forget type options uh, and just to, to repeat again they're not mandatory these are just our optional subjective opinions uh, on how uh, the program should be set up so starting on the general tab one of the first things I'll do is increase the undo file size to 2048. The undo file is like a little hidden file that Inventor references. Whenever you make a change, whenever you create, a, uh, you know, an extrusion feature or anything, anything you do in the program, it stores that action into an undo file. So if you want to do an undo, it references the undo file and it stores so many actions and you can go up to about four gigabytes, I think. Uh, but it's a bit of a bit overkill, so I'll just double that to 2048. So that's just roughly two gig worth of uh, undo file size. And I'll also increase the annotation scale to 1.5. So this doesn't affect anything that gets printed. This is just the on-screen model dimensions that you see, any sketch dimensions that you create, that kind of thing, little symbols, icons and stuff. It just slightly increases the size of those. That's for me because I work on projectors a lot. I work on you know, YouTube, so people are looking at my videos on small screen, so it just increases the text slightly uh, to make it easier on the eye. But you can uh, you can play around with this set, and this one is quite a useful one to know about. So I'll apply on that so it's saved, and I'll just show you the effect that that has, just so you can see what it is actually changing and how how that impacts the program. So I'll, uh, I'll wait for Inventor to kick up, it's always a bit slow to start the very first thing in the morning. Uh, you could do a sketch, do a, I don't know, something like a circle, and then drop a dimension onto that so dimension click and then click and it changes the size of these things here that's primarily what i wanted to change so if we go back into options and then change this to uh, back to one you'll see that changes and it's quite small actually especially on a on a large screen uh, that is quite small but you can put that up to two and it, i don't know how big you can go can you go up to five i mean bloody hell you can but it also <laughs> increases the size of the triad so things do start to become a little bit ridiculous so anything between 1.5 and 2 is, is is acceptable, I suppose. But it depends on your eyesight, I guess. So those are the first two things that'll change. Also this one here, update physical properties on save, parts and assemblies. Uh, this makes sure that whenever you hit save on a model that you've done, it updates and refreshes the, the mass and the center of gravity and all the physical properties of a model whenever you click save. There are ramifications to that, but when you're just starting out, it's nothing that you should be worried about or thinking about when you're just starting out. So I'll tend to tick those uh, and uh, just set and forget. And I think that's it on this tab. I think so. Right. Apply on those. Uh, on the save tab, tend not to change anything here. Uh, a lot of the options, I mean, all of the options do something useful but you tend not to, to tick them until you come across an issue that needs them to be ticked. So it's one of those things that the more proficient you get with a program, you think, oh, wouldn't it, be, wouldn't it be good if that was different? And then you'd look in the options and it might be. There might be an option there for it. Uh, heading on over the file tab. Uh, this one's quite important. Configure the default template. This one is kind of mandatory, actually. Uh, this one is the the measurement units, the, the units that Inventor uses when you start a new model or a drawing. So I'm in the UK, I'm in Brexitville, so I'll tend to have mine set as millimeters and ISO, which is curious that it's just created 
0.856 inches, uh, but I'll have mine set as millimeters and ISO. But in the US, it'll be inches and ANSI. When you click OK, and it'll overwrite the templates that are in your template directory, which uh, is this path here. So you can Control C and then head on over to Windows Explorer. And then, uh, yeah, you can actually, you can't paste that into here because it won't recognize the uh, the percentage symbols. So just go to C, go to uh, Users, go to Public, go to Public Documents, uh, Autodesk, and then Inventor 2018, and then Templates. And you'll see these are the templates here that will overwrite whenever you click Configure the Default Template. So yeah, I tend to have mine set as millimeters and ISO. Click Overwrite and it'll overwrite those files in that folder that I just showed you. So if I finish this up and then start a new model, it should now do uh, a sketch using millimeters as the as the units. Uh, there you go. There you go. 10.9 millimeters. So uh, yeah, I tend to change that because I'm in the UK to be millimeters and ISO, but in the US you would have it inches and ANSI. So that's pretty much it for this one here on file tab. Over to colors, this is probably the most subjective one of the lot. I tend to have mine always set as winter night color scheme. The color scheme is just the color of the background and the color of the on-screen lines. So for example, if you set it to presentation and then click apply, the background changes and then all the on-screen colors change. And there's just different contrasts, different it's again nothing that affects a print so the, these aren't going to print different colors it's just what people prefer like that some people who've got maybe difficulty with vision might prefer a black background with light objects it's just options in it so i tend to have it set as winter night but i'll change the background image to be uh one color uh, sorry gradient so i'll get this sort of dark gray going down to a light gray i just like that effect it looks crisp and clean uh, definitely though <laughs> i'll turn this one off enable enhanced highlighting uh, when you've got cubes in the background and you mouse over them it highlights them as you're mousing over uh, so with enhanced highlighting enabled it flashes the entire object in like a bright white highlight and that uh, that, that becomes like a 70s disco tech it's bloody awful it's like epilepsy inducing seizure going on it's it's awful so I'll, uh, I'll turn that off and all it does with that off is it highlights the edges when you mouse over them instead of the full object so it just makes it a bit easier on the eye and that's it for that tab on display i don't think i change anything on this one there's nothing of really any value here other than reverse zoom direction so this is if you're coming off of something like autocad the zoom wheel direction is reversed for autocad over to inventor so if you want to be consistent with what you're used to uh, which it's surprisingly difficult to come off of the ha the AutoCAD habit. Uh, you can just take this and it'll reverse the mouse wheel zoom direction. Uh, other than that, I don't think there's anything there that I'm interested in. On hardware, I'll always set this to quality and uh, it doesn't take effect until you've restarted and created a new file. But going from performance to quality, uh, use this setting for the highest quality realistic visualization. Is, is a, It's a bit overly dramatic of a description, to be honest. All it does is apply a level of anti-aliasing to the edges. You can see, possibly, I'm not sure how well it'll come across on YouTube, but these edges are quite jaggedy. Going to quality, it applies a minimal amount of, I think it's FXAA, four times FXAA onto the edges, which even the most basic cheap low-end hardware to, on the market today should be able to cope with it really really easily so it's a, it's a setting born out of days gone by when hardware wasn't as good as it is now so i'll always set that at quality and you shouldn't see any performance impact really uh, especially if you're just getting started uh, prompts i'll leave those as they are drawing i tend not to change anything there either i don't do a lot of drawing so i'll not change much here but again it's one of those things where if you do find that you're thinking to yourself it wouldn't be nice if that was different Head on over to the drawing tab, take a read through them. You might find something that you want to change, but there's nothing here that I do. Uh, the content center tab, I usually make sure that this is set as inventor desktop content, unless you're in an office, then you maybe go for vault server. You'll know about it if you need a vault server ticked. Uh, but if you're in an office, you probably don't need this video. But I'll go to this path, control C on that path, go back over to Windows Explorer, paste that path into Windows Explorer and just make sure you've got those desktop content libraries here. If they're not there, You'll have to go back to your original media uh, and then just run setup.exe and uh, it's the invented desktop content that uh, that you want to tick over onto assembly a couple of things i'll change in here will be display component names after relationship names use last occurrence orientation for com component placement and section or parts hit apply uh don't just don't worry about it. i just take them and yeah the, yeah i feature leave those alone part tend not to change anything in here either these three options here 
can be useful for saving time if you always start a new model and you always start by creating a sketch on the XY plane, which tends to be the ground plane, then you can tick that and it'll do that whenever you start a new model. It'll automatically put a sketch down straight away and jump into sketch mode for you. But uh, I just prefer to just start in no sketch mode. Uh, on the sketch tab, right, there's a few things I'll change here. Grid lines and minor grid lines. I think Autodesk have dropped the bollock a little bit here with these. You can't have minor grid lines without grid lines turned on. So right now that's ticked, but it's doing nothing. So if I untick that, you see it's actually doing nothing. But if you tick grid lines, you get this horrible, awful, god awful sort of checkerboard effect going on in the background. Grid lines in Inventor make absolutely no sense at all, unless you've got object snap turned on, and it's impossible to do anything with object snap on, so tend to not have this on. But once you've got grid lines on, if you then untick minor grid lines, you get these sort of larger grid lines, which are, I mean, the space, and I assume there's a setting in somewhere here for the, the spacing. I don't even know where it is because I don't care. But I just tend to turn them both off and just leave the major axes on, uh, the X and Y axes. I'll also disable point alignment because that's the spawn of Satan. It's awful. I'll turn on project objects as construction geometry and auto project edges for sketch creation and edit. These two here, this is whenever you start, whenever you place a sketch on a, on a face, picture a cube, right? You're looking at a cube from an angle and you've got a, a, a face which is sort of off at a skewed angle. If you drop a sketch onto that face, with these two tick boxes enabled, it'll rotate the camera to look straight down on the face. That sounds really useful, but it often gets the zoom factor wrong and it'll zoom right up close to the face and you're like, whoa, whoa. So it can be annoying, but I'll leave it on for now because it tends to be more useful than, than annoying. Uh, and then that's it, hit apply on that and then that's it, yeah, that's the, that's the application options that I tend to have set when I get going with the Inventor and I tend to not change them that much. That's pretty much it. That's the color scheme that I use. That's the annotation scaling that I use and a couple of bits and pieces that I'll change. So if you're just starting, you can set those. Nothing's mandatory, but that's how I have mine set. And uh, yeah, you can pretty much get the job done with those set. Okie dokie, that'll do it for this one. Thank you very much. If you found that useful, do press like, and I'll see you in the next one. Toodles.